Google Manifest version 3 is the latest iteration of Google Chrome's extension manifest and it actually brings with it a significant amount of changes. While it promises improved security and performance, it's also sparking some concerns, especially for users like me and you who rely a lot on ad blockers. And of course, the previous version, Manifest version 2, was meant to be deprecated as soon as like last year, on 2023. But of course, because Google found some issues with the Manifest version 3, they paused that deprecation until 2024, into like fixing some bugs and introducing new features. And now, all of a sudden, Google is coming out and hunting the V2 version, the Manifest V2 version is actually be, gonna be deprecated literally as soon as June 2024. So it's literally in a couple of months. So you're probably wondering like, what are the limitations or the restrictions actually now imposed by the new Manifest version three on the actual developers or extension developers to be a little more specific. So this one in here is actually a migration guide actually shows you exactly how to migrate from V2 to V3. So obviously there's a couple of steps. Of course, you need to update the manifest. It has a new format in here. That's not the hardest thing or the most limiting stuff. The second one is migrating to a service worker, which is some people find it sort of like limiting and actually they, because they de deprecated the new like background worker where you, you know, basically you can like for any extension, you can run code in the background and actually listing for events and stuff. Now we have to use a service worker, which has a different API. It's a little bit limiting and actually goes into sleep in a specific duration of time. And you have to wake it up with a message, which makes it a little more com complicated, but still doable. There's some updates with the API calls, so like some changes and literally the most significant change that a lot of developers were complaining about and completely hating this change is actually replacing blocking web request listeners, which is a most crucial feature used by pretty much everywhere, especially ad blockers like uBlock, AdGuard, any ad blocker extension to basically like monitor the request or the API request or HTTP requests are going back and forth between the website so they can monitor exactly which ones to filter and which ones to leave alone for of course, getting rid of your ads or tracking or al analytics or something like that. So now they're basically just introducing the declarative net request API and completely deprecating the old API, which is like the web request. And as Google is actually stating, it's actually because this significantly degrades the performance and actually requires an excessive access to sensitive user data. So that's why they actually introduced a new API that is a little more restrictive for like getting API requests and stuff like that compared to the V2 or the manifest V2. And for ad blocker extensions, like for example, ad garden here. So what does that exactly mean? What does the change of the manifest V3 and all those breaking limiting changes actually mean to that? Well, if you read the blog post, it has actually a really nice blog post made by the ad guard. They actually explain everything and limitation exactly imposed by the new manifest V3. And how is that gonna actually make it harder to migrate the current ad blocking extensions to the V3? So basically ad blocking here works by using some specific rules that are defined by developers or other developers. These rules are actually just gonna go ahead and block like different ads origins or analytics or tracking origins, like for example, blocking Hotjar or Google AdSense or something of that sort. But because now for the root limits, you know, actually for using for the manifest V3 actually limits extensions or Chrome set a minimum guaranteed limit to only 13,000 rules per actual extension. And the total limit is actually like 330,000 rules for all the extensions tied by a single user, which is very, very low compared to the number of rules that are available out there and compared to like what our guard uses in here to dynamically load rules from the actual server. So this limit is very bad. And now because it actually limits loading remote code from the actual server. So basically ad guard or other extensions or ad blocker extensions can't basically go ahead and load the rules from the server. So that's actually going to make it limit itself to only 30,000 rules. And actually the new extension made by AdGuard that is, you know, manifest V3 compatible, they're actually using it for beta testing and stuff. This basically, if any of that happens and if the browser actually limits that because the browser can actually go ahead and, and limit that at any time. And by the browser, I mean Chrome or Chromium based browsers, of course. So if they actually limit that, they're going to see this message in here. Oh, the browser has modified the list of active built in filters, and you're going to end up with only the basic ad guard filters in here, which most of the times it's not going to fit for actually stop seeing those ads. And because there's so many ads, so many services out there, it's basically impossible to stop it at that point particularly. But likely enough for us, AdGuard was actually able to basically find other solutions for the limitations that are actually, you know, imposed by Google in here on the extensions themselves. 
Now they actually be able to you know, block request trackers proactively, hide banners, basically the same way as you know the old V2 version, uh, block adverts and everything on YouTube, including YouTube. But of course, but because now YouTube has a different policy and everything, has this detector and everything. I don't know. I doubt that. But actually, really cool. They actually found a way, and I went through actually trying the extension. But of course, as they mentioned in here, this isn't actually 100% working. And it's not going to be as good as its like predecessor of like the V2 version, because of course, this is a little more limited compared to the previous version, they have to find other hacks to actually get around that limitations and stuff. So for the Adgar blocker in here, we have the, you know, standard, regular V2 version in here, which is, you know, working on everything because it hasn't been deprecated yet till June. So for Adgar in here, we have the old version that is working fine and everything. And because they introduced this experimental MV3 version for manifest version three, you can go ahead and actually install it and actually start trying it out. And on the latest Chrome version, you can go ahead and actually install that one and actually try it out. So I actually wanted to install the two extensions. I actually went through to like an ad blocker tester, a website where it tests, is, you know, the capabilities of your ad blocker. Is it working? Is it not? And it actually tells you how effective it is against different types of ads in here and, and like tracking tools and analytics tools and stuff. So here I have like the first one here is the standard ad guard version. And the second one I have like the V3 version. So right now I have them actually both disabled. So everything should be, you know, should we should see all the ads. So if you go down here, have like 30 points out of 100. So like literally no blocking. Uh, and here actually, you know, because it can't display the exact ad in here. So it just like tells you if you see the ads or not. So I mean, I see the ads in here. It just gives you a bad score because you can see flash ads in here. Uh, like for example, GIFs in here, like playing like ads and stuff like that. So nothing is basically being blocked from ads or analytics or, or tracking or anything. It's like this in here, all the banners are being displayed. But for instance, if we go ahead and actually enable the ad guard blocker in here, the standard one, the V2. So if you go back down in here, as you see, it's doing a pretty good job at like blocking everything 88 points. So it's basically blocking a lot of stuff, test pass for Google AdSense, uh, Yindex Direct in here, Analytics Tool, Google Analytics, Hotjar, yada, yada, yada. And if I go and actually disable this and enable the V3s, and let me just reload that one. I'm just going to second, go ahead and now enable the V3 in here. It's so going to go ahead and refresh. So the V3, as you see in here, like compared to the previous one, let me just going to refresh it one more time. Make sure the V3 is actually enabled. Now it has like 66 points compared to, you know, the standard version in here, which blocks almost like 88 points. So there's actually some differences. So this one couldn't actually block all of them. So that's probably one of the limitations, actually. And maybe that's probably going to make it not block everything very well. And for example, you can go to this website, which has like, you know, a bunch of ads in here, like the Windows Central. And we can try the new V3 extension in here from Adblock, enable that one. And there you go. Boom. You just remove that ad and remove basically all the ads below. So that's actually working pretty fine. I'm going to say it works like 90% or 80% of the time. But of course, sometimes it could have some hiccups. Now, on the other hand, you have actually a really awesome, simple fix that you can actually easily do is actually move from Chrome completely to Firefox or Mozilla Firefox, which in this case, actually, it's stating in this particular official article that's actually saying that even though the manifest version three is actually approaching the removal or blocking of web request API, which basically, as I said before, ad blockers, everything uses that one. But Mozilla will actually maintain the support for blocking web request in manifest version three. So it's not going to deprecate that it just like to maximize the compatibility for the browsers and yada, yada, yada. But still also, it's going to actually go ahead and support the declarative net request, which is the new API introduced by Google and Chrome. And that makes it heaven for extension developers and for us as users. And that means ad blockers will continue to work the same way as they did before on Firefox. And many other actually changes, you can actually go in and read this article, it's really, really nice. And for those of you who might come and say, why not just use Brave because it has this, you know, ad blocker that is built in and it works really well. Well, yeah, Brave is a fantastic awesome browser that I absolutely love for privacy and everything. But remember, Brave is based on Chromium and Chromium is actually the core that is built, you know, on top of like every other browser like Chrome and Microsoft Edge, Opera, and including Brave as well. So any changes on that imposed by Google can drastically affect all the browsers that are built on top of it. So anyway, catch you everyone in the next ones.